So, so I know usually I'm here with a, with a dog, but this time he wasn't able to make it. So next time, hopefully Cosmoverse is in Berlin and then there'll be a furry pet up here with me. Um, so what I wanted to talk about is less so about the Cosmos SDK. And recently we went through this road mapping process for 2024, for the interchain stack, for Comet BFT, for IBC, CosmJS, CosmOSM. And I really, I kind of wanted to touch less on the roadmap, but more so the thinking behind the roadmap. What led us into the ideas that are prevalent in the roadmap itself? And so this is why I kind of call the title Building Software for a Modular Future. We know the ideas behind Celestia are modular everything, build whatever, and we're going in that direction whether we like it or not. And so we're, this talk is mainly about getting ready for that future and how to adapt for it. So starting out, who am I? I'm the Cosmos SDK lead. I've worked on Tendermint and Comet for two years. I've been in Cosmos for five years, so I've been at all in bits. I went through the, what we coined Gore 2020, the great organizational restructuring. And now um, I'm the founder of Binary Builders. So we're a team that works on the Cosmos SDK, the Builders program, the Interchain Builders program, and Numia, which is a data analytics platform for the wider Cosmos. Uh, my wife works at Polkadot, so we're a happy family of uh, blockchain people. Thankfully, she's in the marketing aspect, so the, I win the technical conversations and she wins the marketing discussions, um, for better or for worse. Uh, and I'm Croatian-American. I love sports, dogs, and boats. A lot of you know me from Duke, the dog, um, my golden retriever, um, but, and so next time he'll definitely be here. So, mod monoliths and modular. So when we really think about monoliths, it's like, what are we talking about? We're talking about when you're developing a product, when, you're not, when it's meant to be used for a singular product, you're not building a generalized piece of software to be used by a wider uh, audience. If we, took, if we take a look at the blockchain ecosystem, we can kind of see this in the form of the Bitcoin client, the Go Ethereum client. And I mean, if Cosmos wasn't this app, didn't have this app chain thesis, then the Cosmos SDK, Comet, and IBC would have been specific for the Cosmos Hub. We wouldn't have a framework to build blockchains. And so when we talk about modular, what are we talking about? And I'm taking a step back from, okay, modular in terms of execution and consensus, where Celestia is really dominating that conversation, but in taking a step back into software. What does it mean to actually be modular in software? Well, first of all, you're a toolkit, you're a software development kit. The Cosmos SDK is called the Cosmos SDK, it has that SDK aspect on it, but it's more of a framework. It helps define how to write. Of course, giving too much freedom to developers is somewhat of a foot gun, so we do want to help with that. The second part is you can write spe specific code for your blockchain. So as we know today, in the hundreds of blockchains that there are using the Cosmos SDK, public or private, they're all application specific. Even though they could be a generalized VM app, uh, blockchain, they're still application specific. They still have their nuances for what they want to develop, what they want to develop in the, for the user. And so in this mind, we wanna go in that direction and kind of build a more modular stack. So, but why pick one? Why can't you do both? Well, when you wanna pick one, you wanna agree on a vision. You want to agree on that vision. And of course, you want to see what your users are. In the Web2 world, many things are monoliths, or in their world, they call it microservices. Kubernetes, everyone here loves Kubernetes, I know that. There's no headaches from that. And that is a whole different world, but it's like it's still a monolith in, in, a, in a way because the products that are developed within these microservice architectures are proprietary, meaning they're not used in other, other environments, other other companies unless they're an open source product. And so we want to agree on picking one, a monolith or a modular software architecture. So looking at Cosmos, so what is Cosmos today? So when, when, when we're developing the roadmap and talking with the team, talking with IBC, talking with Comet, we really took a step back and really looked at what is Cosmos? What is it offered today? What is its, what it's, what is its identity? And what are, the develop what are the developers looking at? The number, thing, the number one thing we came back with was sovereignty. Cosmos SDK and the Interchain stack offers sovereignty to its users. 
This is the one and most powerful thing that we really offer to users. Everyone has their own validator set. Everyone owns their own data availability, their own settlement. And now with interchain security, that's even growing. Application specific, I already touched on that. With the Cosmos SDK, there's evolving requirements. The Cosmos SDK was written, the first commit was in 2017. And a lot of that architecture still exists today and is still using. Of course, now we're seeing use cases that we never thought would be possible. We, ne we couldn't imagine what would be there in 2017. Even I wasn't part of the project in 2017. I'm not saying it would have influenced anything, but it is, it is so different. We're seeing new use cases, the development speed. So if we really look at what Comet does, what the Cosmos SDK does, it abstracts a lot. It abstracts everything for 95% of users. But for those 5% of users, their development speed is fast. Their requirements are evolving. If we look at, take example, DYDX, Celestia, Rollkit, Barachain, Evmos, those teams are really pushing the envelope of what you can do with the Cosmos SDK because their requirements are evolving as their user needs are evolving. Now, we've we've, we have performance. We are a gas-efficient environment, for better or for worse. When we're working with gas-inefficient environments, then it becomes a bit harder, but we are gas-efficient. Everyone here is paying micro-pennies in transactions. I'm of the opinion we should make a penny the minimum for every chain, no more micro-pennies. And I'm hoping we will get there with fee markets. We're going to explore new things. You can integrate VMs, and you can customize your economics. We're seeing a bunch of blockchains out there. There was the Cosmos Hub when it developed its own economics. Many chains followed after that. We have some relay with no inflation. Evmos is changing their inflation. Uh, Osmosis, everyone is really customizing their economics. In the bull market, it was, okay, inflate, we need users, airdrops, XYZ, everything like that. Now it's kind of more deliberate. How are we actually doing user acquisition? What is the cost per user? And everyone's really diving into that research to be able to understand what economics do we need for our chain? Now, we've looked at Cosmos. So let's look at the broader ecosystem. What is going on in the broader ecosystem? Well, rollups, optimistic, and ZK are becoming the hottest topic out there. If you haven't heard of rollups, then, I don't know, then you might be living under a rock, or you might not be in blockchain too deep. Um, I'm a bit too deep on that side. Um, <laughs> so there's rollups. This is kind of bridging the gap from, if we take deploying a smart contract, on a scale of 10, deploying a smart contract is one. It is the easiest thing to do. You, f you write some code, you get, have an RPC, and you deploy it to Solana, Avalanche, Ethereum, Near, all these places. One-click deployment, done. And then you have the deploying a chain. Deploying a chain, finding a validator set, coordinating the genesis, upgrades, developing your chain, customizing, taking, making sure your economics are on point. That sort of thing is a 10. And what is the middle? There hasn't been a middle until really rollups came around. Rollups kind of fill in the two, four, six, eight. From the two where you have a centralized sequencer to eight where you have a decentralized sequencer, but you're still using other people's security. This is quite useful for many applications. We've looked at Risk v So Risk v is, uh, we were actually just talking about this at lunch. It was released in 2015. Now, I'm of the opinion, Wasm is our stepping stone. Risk v is our potential final destination. Wasm is amazing. It does everything we need. We can use it in constrained environments. It is a unknown environment that you deploy code to. But Risk v offers a different objective, and so I'm really excited for the direction of Risk v and the different Risk v VMs that are being written out there, from Risk Zero to Polka VM from the Polkadot ecosystem. Fully homomorphic encryption. Now, this is something I put on the slide because it's become a new buzzword in the, in the VC circle, in the tech circle. It's been, it was ZK a few months ago, and now it's fully, morph, fully homomorphic encryption. There's a couple teams in Cosmos talking about this. It's a, I'm not going to go too deep because that's a whole subject on its own. But modular execution and consensus, I already touched on this. Celestia pioneered the whole mod modular execution with their paper Lazy Ledger a couple of years ago. And they're preparing for a launch pretty soon. Account abstraction, gaming, scalability, these are all in the broader crypto ecosystem. And so when we're looking at the roadmap, we're looking, if we want those users, if we want those users, how are we going to get them? The Cosmos SDK does this, how are we going to make it do that? And so that really got us thinking to, okay, like, 
how are we going to get there? Do we have to rewrite it? Are we rewriting the SDK from scratch? Or are we able to take the SDK in a direction to get there? I can assure everyone we're not rewriting it from scratch. I know some people would be yelling Rust in the background here. But we're, we're, keep, we're staying with Go for a little bit longer. Um, stay tuned for next year for some exciting news there. But it's, so where are we taking the Cosmos SDK? How are we going to get there? Well, the interchain stack. So before, we're, how are we going to get there? Just quickly, the interchain stack. The interchain stack. I touched on the Cosmos ecosystem, the wider blockchain ecosystem, but now touching on the interchain stack. I like to think of it as it's in between modular and monolithic because it is an SDK if you know how to dive deep into it. But it's very hard. It's more of a framework because it gives you everything you need, but it doesn't allow you to swap out some components that you may want to be able to do these things. So it is, in my opinion, in between modular and monolithic. So, what, so it, it, you can also write your specific logic. You can bring your business logic into the protocol. So uh, Vitalik actually just released a blog post, it was perfect timing, about how maybe they should start thinking about enshrining more of these apps, like liquid staking, into the protocol for, to decrease the amount of centralization. And so in this mind, we've been doing this for years. Everyone here has been doing that for years. We're already ahead of the curve on that sense. The last point is on-chain. Since we are working in a gas-efficient gas efficient environment, you can do so much on-chain. You can push all your client complexity on-chain without having to worry about building complex clients to be able to interpret that data. Now, we're asking people to stop doing that so the state machine can come, become even faster. So, which direction should we take? Should we go modular or should we go monolith? Should we just build for a specific use case, the use case that we have today? Or should we go into a modular world where we are a true toolkit, a software development kit, in order to enable not only the use cases that exist today, but the use cases also of tomorrow? So, as our mascot of modularity says, modular everything. If you don't know who that is, that is uh, Nick White. He's the, I call him the modular mascot. So we really want to push not only the Cosmos SDK, but the, software, but the interchain stack into a software development kit. We were just talking about this at the Interchain Roadmap call, where we really want to hone in on it's a toolkit. You don't have to use the Cosmos SDK. You don't have to use Comet. You don't have to use IBC Go. You can use components and really develop what you want. When the Cosmos ecosystem is one of the few ecosystems that has a license and that has the ecosystem in order to support that ex exploration. So different consensus algorithms. So here, the Cosmos SDK today is really tied to Comet. And we have users like Rollkit. There's been exploration with Narwhal and Tusk, Narwhal and Bullshark, and different consensus engines and how they would work with the Cosmos SDK. There's been talk, I've been talking with the Substrate people on putting the Cosmos SDK on Substrate and how that would work. And so we want to really develop, abstract the consensus from the application, from your testing environments, and really bring in the ability to really pick what you want. Rollups. I've touched on this. This is the hot topic. Now, I say rollups now, but in two years, what is it going to be? And are we going to be ready to, to change in that direction? I'm a firm believer that today, if we, had, if we were able to work on the, road, in the 2024 roadmap in 2023, we would already be launching rollups left and right. We have a, a Pocket just announced a project that they're working on to migrate their chain from their own custom software to the Cosmos SDK and Rollkit. And so we're already seeing that vision come to fruition, but how do we get there faster? And how do we make the software so whatever comes next, if it's, I don't even know what the word will be, but whatever comes next, are we able to take advantage of that shift in technology? Are we able to develop a piece of software that's able to move with the ebbs and flows of the ecosystem, not only of Cosmos, but of the wider blockchain ecosystem? ZK. So we are still pretty early on ZK. It is exciting. It is amazing, but there is a lot of potential centralization that comes from ZK technology and the proving times of today and the provers. There's a, there's a lot of hardware acceleration research, and we want to really start playing in that world and bringing ZK to the Cosmos ecosystem outside of, oh, you, ha you have to write your own state machine from scratch, like teams like Namada and Penumbra. We want to uh, make that available to teams that are just writing simple applications in Golang or in different languages within the, within the Cosmos SDK. Crosslang. So like I mentioned before, 
The blockchain people love Rust. I believe Cosmosm is like gave the Cosmos ecosystem what they wanted. People want to write Rust. It won the war. Like it's how, in the container war, Docker won that. Rust won the blockchain ecosystem of languages. And so we want to enable the Cosmos ecosystem and its developers to write modules in different languages. This is a bit different from using Cosmosm or using uh, a Gorex VM or using the EVM because you're writing potentially kernel level code. The, the analogy is the Cosmos SDK is the kernel, the core layer, and the modules are its core layer because you are more free to do what you want. Inside of VMs, you are working in a constrained environment because it is a virtual machine. In the Cosmos SDK, there is no virtual machine, so you can really do whatever you want. And so we want to enable that to work in different languages. Commitment structures. So today, everyone uses Merkle trees. But are Merkle trees really the best we can do? Is it really the like, end-all, be-all for like, what we want to do? I don't think so. I think there's a whole plethora amount of research that we haven't been exploring in terms of different commitment structures. Of course, we're working with the IVL structure. There's teams working with SMT. The, the uh, SMT, there's JMT. There's different Merkle trees. But there's very few teams actually exploring vector commitments or accumulators. And so we really want to challenge everyone. I feel like we be, not only in the UX of the e entire blockchain ecosystem, but also in the protocol level. We've kind of become the commitment structure, the Merkle tree is good enough. Like, we don't need anything better because it works. But I like to challenge those norms, challenge those things that have been accepted over the years in blockchain, and ask ourselves, is it really that good? Can we, can we do better? Because at the end, blockchain innovated so much in the early days. And in the later days, we kind of became slower. We kind of became more complacent. There is an immense amount of research coming out, but it, it's in a certain area without focusing on other areas. The other areas are just, oh, it's, fi it's fine, it works. But I really feel like in the next couple years, we will be looking at those different areas. So what's next? So when the Cosmos SDK releases 1.0, this is how the world will look. Um, we're going to solve all the world's problems, no more wars. So what we want to do, we want to abstract consensus in the runtime. This is already working. We want to really we want to see what it would be like to control peer-to-peer -peer and the messages it, it disseminates from the application. There's already a discussion with Comet that we're doing around the mempool. The application should have more control over the mempool because it knows what, every, what the messages are, how to broadcast, in what order, how to create batches. Comet does not. Comet does a certain level of functionality. And it's doing that amazingly. And if the team was able to focus 100% of the time on that, instead of having to control all this extra data they need, then the product would be even better. Storage, we want to allow to swap commitment structures, like I touched on. We want to allow people to research, to experiment with different commitment structures and not be stuck to a single commitment structure. We want to enable that, and we want to foster an environment of experimentation in the Cosmos ecosystem not only at the application level, but also at the protocol level. Performance, memory consumption, all these things are areas where we want to in improve. Now, on the performance front, we've already had magnitudes of improvement over, it, over our performance in the last release. The new release is a magnitude faster in performance. The next release is potentially another magnitude over IVLV, uh, uh, the, uh, over V50. And there's already other improvements on making it even faster. And so in this world, you can, make, you can make block times even faster. It just becomes now, there's this old saying from, the, from consensus researchers that consensus is not the bottleneck, it's actually the execution. Well, I challenged the team, the Cosmos SDK team, hey, can we flip that around? Can we actually say, at the beginning of 2023, I asked the team, can we actually say, hey, execution is faster than consensus? And now we've already achieved that in our experiments. And now it's like, how do we bring that to the market? Modules. Like I said, we are working in a gas-efficient environment. But because we are in a gas-efficient environment, micro pennies for gas, micro pennies for fees, and the problem becomes if you want to start working with the gas-inefficient environment, how does that work? It becomes very, much more complicated. We are doing extra work in the Cosmos SDK in order to make things easier in our world but then it's much more harder to prove or verify in other worlds like Ethereum. But also, 
the other part is modular modules. So what does this mean? If we're able to develop a way, like the current, the current design we're doing with the accounts module for account abstraction and different types of accounts, then we'll be able to allow people to only prove the states transition and not have to worry about the underlying foundation of the module. So when? So we're, gonna already, we're already started working on a lot of this stuff, but I'm hoping around the first half of 2025 is when we cut the, the full version of V1 in the SDK. But what does that mean? What does the V1 of the SDK mean since all the modules will be V1 before that? It only means the core layer, so the base app, the store, what is interacting with the consensus layer. Everything else will be V1 long before that. And with that, if you have any questions or want to help or ideate on some of the stuff I talked about, please just reach out. I'm always happy to chat and always happy to pick your brain and vice versa to be able to really challenge what we're doing in the Cosmos ecosystem. Thank you.